Ryan Millington collects $5,000 and secures spot in the Rodney Cook Classic. Burt Myers, modified track champ for the 10th time. Justin Taylor earns first career sportsman track championship. Ryan Rebko, the only repeat winner on the Double Down Weekend. This is your Race Weekend Wrap-Up on Race22.com. Friday night, August 16th. A Speedway prelude to the Rodney Cook Classic $5,000 to win, 100 lap feature, 12 cars took time in qualifying. Ryan Millington was your winner, Justin Carroll second, Mike Bledsoe finished third, via relief driver Trevor Ward. Lane Riggs finished fourth, Dustin Rumley rounded out your top five. Race 22's Langley Austin caught up with Ryan Millington in victory lane and says he had to overcome brake issues, but was able to cruise early as his car was dialed in. We had a really good car tonight. I thought we had a little bit better of a car on the long run than we actually did, but uh, we didn't, so I had to save a little bit more than I anticipated there, probably lap 10 to 50, I'd say, but you know, we had what it took at the end and that's all that matters. Had a little bit of a brake issue early in the race, tell us about it. Yeah. Um, I was losing the pedal, which all year we've had a really good brake pedal, so that was a little bit different for us, but we did a couple things different this, this week with the braking system, so you know maybe it's something we need to look over for the next race. Relief driver Trevor Ward says Mike's car was really good, but explained that his own car had motor issues. Uh, we had a rocket arm come loose, and uh, unfortunately that put us out of the race. We had a really good car. We saved, let him go on, burned our stuff up, but uh, had a rocket arm come loose. I gotta thank uh, AER Roofing for supporting me with that car, and uh, Mike Bledsoe, man, he, he was getting tired at the end there, and uh, it happened to be the right time when I was broke a rocker arm, and he said, get in my car, so I was like, yeah, that'll work. And it, he's got a pretty good car, and uh, I think if I'd have figured it out a little earlier, I feel like we could have we could have won with it, to be honest with you. How hard is it to jump in another man's car like that and just take off? Man, it's actually pretty crazy. We were just trying not to go a lap down. I was trying to find his radio hookups, his fans. I couldn't find out how to start it. But uh, yeah, it's just it's pretty uh, pretty different. Anderson Motor Speedway had 50 laps for the late model stock cars. Nine cars were in the pits. Ashton Higgins was your winner. Brandon Lemke finished second. Kenneth Hayden finished third. Ryan Vargas finished fourth. And David Roberts rounded out your top five. Saturday night, August 17th, season finale at the Bowman Gray Stadium. 150 laps, 27 modifieds took the green flag. Jonathan John Boy Brown was voted most popular driver in the modified, and Burt Myers won his 10th modified track championship. As for the race, Brandon Ward was your winner, James Savali finished second, Burt Myers finished third, Danny Bowen finished fourth, and Jason Myers rounded out the top five. Race 22's Andy Marquis spoke with Brandon Ward in Victory Lane. Brandon says he loves racing with James Savali, but says all those late cautions made him nervous. Come down to the wire there, we had a bunch of restarts, and, and really I, I was better if it would have went green, so I didn't want to see all the restarts, but you know, you play the hand you're dealt, and um, I got shuffled back to third. I knew James had pitted and put tires on, so I honestly felt like there at the end, he was probably going to get away from me, but that one lap I was able to, to see where he was getting tight at and get back to him. And, you know, once I got to him and just got just gave him a little shot there, then I was able to break off of him and get to the infield and get under him. And it was just a good race between us two. I love racing with James. Me and him race hard all the time, you know, always have. So uh, it's always fun to race with him. And he also spoke with Burt Myers about the track championship. Burt says this one was not easy. I've been blessed to win a, several of them, and uh, I think this ranks right up there with the best. Uh, just the way the year went, starting out in the hole, being able to, to overcome the deficit and take the point lead, we never look back. Uh, I know you wanted to win the race. You had James Savali behind you. It looked to me like you moved over. Just let him go. Big picture, was that the case? I asked him on the radio, I said, you want to win a race for the championship? And uh, the crew chief came on, he said, championship would be nice. But it, with the 83 sideline, I knew that the uh, 79 didn't what, have enough. He didn't have, well, I knew that the 79 didn't have anything to lose. And uh, I kind of had it in my mind. I was going to try to get through one and two and see what happened. And when we got to one, he just nailed me and ran me out wide. And I just kind of let him have it and settled in line and did what I had to do to secure the championship. And going for a sixth straight next year? <laughs> yeah, we'll do our best. 
40 lap feature was set for the sportsman cars. 17 sportsman cars took the green flag. Tiger Tommy Neal was your winner. Dylan Ward finished second. Zach Orr finished third. Justin Taylor finished fourth. And Wesley Thompson rounded out your top five. Andy Marquis caught up with Tiger Tommy Neal in victory lane. Tommy was on a mission when he hit the track Saturday night. Mm, well, when I sit out here and I come out here tonight, I come out here to do one thing, and that was to win the race, and that's what we did. Uh, me and Dylan talked about it all week long, and uh, that's what me and him both wanted to do is to uh, come and win the race, and that's what we set out to do, and that's what we both tried to do. And uh, we both work hard on these cars and spend a lot of time away from our families and friends and stuff that we, you know, we could be doing, and we are working on these cars trying to make them fast. And, uh, we probably got two of the fastest cars here. And that uh, wasn't an easy race to win either. No, I mean, Dylan raced hard, but, well, you know, we raced fair. That was the main thing. You know, uh, they gave me a couple good shots. Uh, I corrected it and kept on getting it, and uh, that's how you race. You know, you don't drive through people, and uh, you get you earn respect, and you get respect. That's how you deal with it. Justin Taylor won his first Sportsman Track Championship and spoke with Andy Marquis, saying it means the world to him and his team. Everything. Everything. We give all year long. We give 115% for this. Oh man, and Randy Armstrong, you can't put in words what they know about a race car. They made my job really easy behind the wheel. Um, they made me look really good all year long, but I'm gonna tell you now, without them, this wouldn't be possible. A lot of people live for this. Was this something you've dreamt of your whole life? Absolutely. Last year we told them we were gonna earn their respect last year, and we did. We won a couple races, we run really good. But this year, I told them I was going to take their respect. That is exactly what we've done. Langley Speedway had 100 laps with the late model stock cars. 15 cars took the green flag. Greg Edwards was your winner. Connor Hall finished second. Danny Edwards finished third. Woody Howard finished fourth. And Brendan Queen rounded out the top five. Now, where most of the attention was this weekend, Southern National Motorsports Park Double Down Weekend. Twin 40 lap features for the late model stock cars. On Saturday, 27 cars took time in qualifying. Riley McCaskill turned the fastest lap with a 16.083. In the race, it was Ryan Rebko capturing the victory on his very first start at the park. Wes Burton finished second, Brandon Clements finished third, Bradley McCaskill ended up fourth, and Peyton Sellers rounded out to top five. Mike Looney finished sixth, Philip Morris finished 15th. Langley Austin caught up with Ryan Repco in victory lane. Ryan says the track suits his driving style and loves the facility. Oh, it's a beautiful racetrack. Uh, Michael Diaz and his crew have a great facility. And I told him that um, this morning. Just a killer racetrack and it fits my driving style. And we were able to just kind of ride the first half of the race and then kind of fire off with about 10 to go and take the lead and just drive away. Race number two on Saturday, Brian Voss was your winner in race number two. Bradley McCaskill finished second. Peyton Sellers finished third, Chris Chapman finished fourth, and Boo Boo Dalton rounded out to top five. Mike Looney finished sixth, Philip Morris finished seventh. In victory lane, Brian talked about his engine package in a weekend just for fun turned into a victory. I swear I can't believe it, this town competition. I mean, we were just coming up here this weekend, Steve, Zacharias, and I, also Yarbrough made the trip, just to have a little bit of fun and um, to kind of see where we sat up. You know, we can't run Martinsville, we don't have the funds to do it. And Justin Milliken really helped us out. We raced hand in hand down there in Myrtle Beach. And we really didn't change too much. I mean, a little bit of tweak from the Myrtle Beach before us had to raise it up. It's a 604. Uh, you know, we're down a little bit on Myrtle Beach with the late model pack. They're just limited. They really got to figure it out. I feel like they make it uh, pretty fair for everybody. So uh, 604 wasn't hurt tonight for sure. So that's good. Sunday, August 18th, right back at the Southern National Motorsports Park, twin 40 lap features. 17 cars took time in qualifying. Bradley McCaskill once again turned the fastest lap, 16.554. Race number one, it was Ryan Repco again in victory lane. Bradley McCaskill finished second, Brandon Clements finished third, Peyton Sellers finished fourth, Brian Voss rounded out your top five. Philip Morris would finish 11th, Mike Looney would finish 15th. Race 22's Langley Austin caught up with Ryan Repco in victory lane. Two wins in two days, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a wonder you don't come down here more often. Oh yeah, I mean, I didn't know I was good at it. That's why I didn't come down here. But um, the killer facility, Michael Diaz and his crew were just great. And um, man, it's just a great racetrack. I, I gotta come back to the Thanksgiving Classic. After finishing 15th, Mike Looney spoke with Langley Austin about the contact from Philip Morris. Yeah, we were uh, trying to get after Repco on that start there. Um, I overdrove one a little bit, pushed up. Um, it's 
trying to get a better arc at three there, and he just just got in there a little hot, got into us, turned us around. And, uh, you know, the cars are coming through here so fast. We just big train on run over, so there's nowhere for him to go. Ain't hell of a day. We, we uh, made some good gains on the car. Uh, I think, you know, we could almost pace with the leaders right there. I think it's just one adjustment away and having a car to win with. Yeah, that's what we needed to do, but it's hard to do on the road. Um, and that's why them guys won all them championships they won. You know, they know how to get it done. Uh, I'm sure he didn't run over me on purpose. Uh, we raced together a long time. It's just racing. Um, you know, it's, if I thought he'd done it on purpose, I'd be down there be on top of it right now. But I don't think he did. It's just racing. Race number two, 14 cars started the feature. Bradley McCaskill was your winner. Mason Diaz finished second, taking over Ronald Renfro's car. Peyton Sellers finished third. Ryan Repco finished fourth, and Boo Boo Dalton rounded out your top five. Mike Looney, Sam Yarborough, and Wes Burton did not start feature number two on Sunday. In victory lane, Bradley McCaskill talking about Mason Diaz driving his teammate's car and says it was a hot one out there this weekend. It was a long day. It's been a long weekend. It's hot, but uh. Just, we kept working on it, getting a little bit better each time, and um, Ronald was feeling under the weather here with all this heat, and uh, got Mason to drive the car, and we got that car. I mean, it was a little too free, I think, on the long run there at the end, and we were able to squeak by there at the end, but uh, it's pretty cool for a one-two finish for our, for our team. We actually did two different adjustments on the cars. Um, we freed his up a little bit more than we did mine. I was just trying to play it a little conservative. I knew we we always want to win, but we kind of aired to the safe side just uh, the way the cards fell. But, um, we know what to do next time for sure. So that thing is just somewhere in between the two because it was uh, both of them were rocket ships. Langley Austin also caught up with Peyton Sellers, who talked about his race weekend. Yeah, you know we just didn't qualify that well today, and I don't know it just didn't stick. It didn't it didn't hook up and go like it needed to. Yesterday we qualified a solid fourth right there with the pole guys, and uh, didn't have it today. So car drove good in the race. He showed that we drove up to fourth in the first race and, and third here in the second race. So um, man, it's a real solid weekend for us, getting four top fives and. Uh, you know, being there, being a contender, and that's all we wanted to do. You know, don't get me wrong, we come to win races, but uh, to hold our own against Bradley and these guys, they're, you know, this is their home track. And to come in and think we're going to just annihilate them was, was not reasonable thinking. So, um, you know, Ryan Repco showed up this weekend. He had a good car, but, uh, you know, we had a good solid effort, too. So I'm just thankful these guys worked as hard as they did. We'll go back home now and try to get better for South Boston next week. Philip Morris finished eighth says it was a humbling experience and took full responsibility for the contact with Mike Looney. Yeah, the worst worst possible thing, get together with Mike Looney. I, I got kind of lured into a three wide and uh, Mike got pretty high, maybe up into the marbles over here and I checked way up to let him get in line and then when we got to the other end, I was to his inside and then I had one to my inside and it looked like Mike parked it. Uh, I got on the binders hard, but not good enough to stay out of him. And, heck, I, I was funny. I mean, just flat out. I just got into him, just couldn't get loaded up enough. I'm not sure why, what happened in front of me. Uh, I was kind of going in. I had the 18 on the inside of me. So it was just a crazy weekend. You know, we worked hard, and uh, it was a humbling weekend. So if we can get back and run good at the racetrack, I'll be, I'll be thankful. Well, that's it for this episode of Race Weekend Wrap-Up on Race22.com. Until next week, we'll see you at the races.